My name is Jutta Reisinger. I am a general practitioner from Austria and I work as a volunteer for Action Regen, Action Rain Vienna, a small organization for developing for African countries. Our topics we work on are sexual and reproductive health, family planning and HIV prevention. I have been in a health center in Kisumu where they mobilize children for undergoing this procedure. The children were not informed. Mobilizers from the campaign, the official campaign for AIDS, for male circumcision, mobilizers coming to schools and it's only the headmaster who has to give the consent. And the children were asked to come to the health center and they give them a small soda and a small gift of some panties. The children are not informed what will really, really happen to them. They have a big group pressure and they explain to them then if, you, it's, if it's done then you will not get the HIV. You are clean and you are member, you are one of the members in our community. In this uh, region near Kisumo, the, the tribe of the Luos are living and the Luos from their tradition, they don't circumcise their girls, they don't circumcise their boys, but nevertheless, they invite those children, they force them to come and they, they don't inform the parents. Might be they are afraid that the parents will not consent because they, from their tradition, they don't agree with the circumcision. Pretending that, HIV, that circumcision will be a protection against HIV AIDS, with this information a child of eight years cannot understand. So how, will the, how do they do this uh, procedure? They invite those children on every Friday afternoon, they bring them with matatus to the health center, some 40, 40 or 50 young boys, eight years old, they come to the health center and there are three medical officers. They, are, they call themselves surgeons. They are waiting for them in an operation theater. They have one coordinator and some other nurses and helpers. They do this, uh, this operation far away from the health center. They do it in a separate pavilion so that nobody can watch it. And even for me, I was not allowed to, to enter and to see how they do it. I was just around and I was interviewing the children and taking some pictures. Of course, I had a problem with the coordinator. The lady came and asked me, what are you doing here? I don't want that you uh, observe our children during this intervention. I saw children crying, screaming, because they heard the others who were in the operation theater and they started to cry. So the children were very, very much afraid and they wanted to go home, but it was not allowed. The coordinator and the other health uh, staff came shouting at the children and even beating them. The children were so afraid and the children were crying and I was just here and I could anything do. And if you see the pictures from those children, you see in their eyes how deeply they were afraid and how deeply they were they, they, they lost all confidence on the, sit on, on the parents, on the health centers, on the medical staff and on their teachers. The lady started to tell me, I was asking her, why don't you wait until those children are a little bit elder so that they can decide freely and con give their own consent. And she said, we cannot do this because if we do this, we lose them. The moment they realize what's happened to them, we will lose them. They will not come. And I said, why do, don't you wait? 
She, she gave me the answer, it was you, the white people who brought us this program in Africa. And there is a lot of money invested for this, and now we have to bring good results. Therefore, we take the small children instead of waiting until they are big enough and uh, to, to decide freely. I was really shocked about the situation, how they recruit the children. My question is now, how could we help uh, in this dilemma? We go to schools and we speak to children at, in the age of might be 10 years old, something like this, to start to explain them about puberty, changing of behavior, fertility, sexuality, sexual abuse and sexual violence. And if we come to the point of circumcision, we have to inform them. But we will have big problems with the organization and we will have big problems with the school and the government program because this is an official health program in Kenya. So my concern is how will we go about now? And I just want to tell you, if you see the pictures here and the, from the children, the expression in their eyes and their situation where they had to cry, what do you think, will, what will happen to those children, to those young boys when they become a man, when they become adult? This, this will have an influence on their sexual behavior, on their partnership, and on their sexual life. And in the worst of cases, they will repeat this very violent action concerning the behavior to, uh, towards the, the, the wife and to their children. And this will be harmful for the whole family and for the whole society. Therefore, I ask all those who are helping, who are working in medical programs or in social programs for Africa, please don't close the eyes any longer and try to, to, to speak about this problem openly because it's not enough just to bring medical help to these countries and to these people. We have also to care for their psychos for their uh, Psycho psychological situation. I ask everybody who is engaged in these developing programs, please bring them information, motivate them to take a good decision for their health, inform the whole community, inform the parents and inform also the, kind, the children so that this can be stopped. Thank you.